How's it going guys? This is a video explanation for the merge sort algorithm. This is one of the most important algorithms in computer science and this video actually comes from my course which is called Interview Espresso. This is a conceptual explanation but if you want the specific code samples as well as a ton of other videos like this check out my course at interviewespresso.com. All right thanks for listening let's get into it. Okay let's look at sorting from 10,000 feet. Commonly, we'll want to sort strings, numbers, or even objects based on a custom criteria. So how do these sorting algorithms actually function? There are actually many different ways to sort a given set of inputs. In fact, here are six sorting algorithms. Selection sort, insertion sort, bubble sort, merge sort, keep sort, and quick sort. These all do exactly the same thing. They can sort based on a given criteria. However, not all these sorts are created equal. Three of these sorts, actually we could call naive sorts. They're not as efficient as the other three, taking O of n squared time complexity in the worst case. That's because for every item in the input array, we have to consider all the other items to make sure it's in the right place. These sorts are the most intuitive, hence being naive but are effectively useless since we have the other three sorts which are an order of magnitude more efficient. So here are a few optimal sorting algorithms, merge sort, heap sort, and quick sort. Now these are not all the efficient sorting algorithms. In fact, Python uses a custom one called TimSort under the hood, and JavaScript will either use quick sort or merge sort depending on the engine and situation. The important thing to know though is sorting algorithms cannot be more efficient than n log n worst case. As a rule of thumb, I'd say it's good to be able to implement at least one of the efficient sorting algorithms, which is why we'll be doing merge sort in the next problem. As for why you should know one, consider a situation like this. Your interviewer gives you a array input that would benefit by being sorted because maybe you could use binary search on it. Now at first, you could use the built-in sorting method for JavaScript or Python, but if you had extra time, your interviewer could ask you to implement your own sorting algorithm. If you know how to implement merge sort and get busted out as the tool in your tool belt, then it'll be really impressive. One last thing before we get into merge sort though, on top of being either naive or efficient, sorting algorithms can also be stable or unstable. Now, sorting stability is very important to be familiar with. And what stability means is this. Let's say we have an array of objects representing people with two properties, name a string and age a number. Let's say we want to sort first by name. This gives us alphabetical order, which is great, but we might also have a second sorting criteria, which is age. We want youngest to oldest for this list of data. What a stable sort will do is maintain the alphabetical order from our first sort as a suborder within the new order of our sort by age. In other words, it preserves the relative order of our items when we have multiple sorting criteria. What an unstable sort would do is just scramble everything up so it wouldn't maintain that relative order of our first sort. It would just overwrite it. It might sound like a niche case where you're doing two sorts in a row, but it is a lot more common than you think. So knowing the difference between stable and unstable sorts is pretty important and asking you to explain the difference is fair game as an interview question too. So out of the sorts we mentioned earlier, these are stable and these are unstable. So you'll notice that the only stable sort from this list that's also optimal efficiency is merge sort, which is part of the reason we're going to do it. Anyway, that's a five minute overview of sorting. So let's go a bit deeper by diving into the merge sort problem. All right, let's dive into merge sort and how it works. Sort of like binary search, merge sort is going to break down our array into smaller and smaller pieces. In fact, we're going to break our array down all the way until it's just items of size one. Once we have this, we're able to compare individual items to each other, which is a requirement for sorting. Then by comparing these two items, we can put one in front of the other. What this gives us is a relative order for these two items. So the way I think of the individual items is a Lego square block of size one. And once we do that first combination, we now have a Lego of size two. So we're playing with size two pieces. 
what our size two lego has now is a relative order so we know the smaller is on the left and the larger is on the right now what we do is compare this size two lego to other size two legos so we've built our entire array into blocks of two and now we want to build a block of four so we combine two blocks of two what we have to do to accomplish this is the same as we did with size one blocks however now we have four items to compare and the way we compare them is with a pointer method with two pointers one pointing at each block so we compare the two smallest items and take whichever one is smaller for our new four piece block then we advance the pointer of the one we took and then compare the items again the items in one block could both be smaller than the other block in which case we would also take the second item and then just dump what's left over into the new array now we have our new block of four that's ready to be compared to the next block so just to explain the time complexity up front again we're looking at an n log n time complexity here and let's dive into why let's think back to the other place we've seen a log algorithm binary search in that case we were halving the size of the searchable array on every step we're doing that here in reverse every time we combine two blocks we're doubling the size of our sorted array that will be our output so like binary search if the size of our input doubles then we'll only have to do one additional block combination step and each time we combine two blocks we're gonna have to look at up to n items to determine their relative location in more technical terms we're running an outer loop log n times as our sorted array doubles in size on each iteration then our inner loop is looking at up to n items to determine their relative order in the increasing size blocks Whew. I know that was a mouthful <laughs> okay so if that all makes sense to you then first of all I'm impressed but secondly you're probably thinking how do we actually break down this array uh, in the first place we'll need to recursively break down our array into smaller and smaller pieces this will follow a tree recursive structure because for every block it'll be broken into smaller blocks until we reach size one so our call stack will branch out kind of like this then on the way back up we'll need what's known as a subroutine or a helper function to actually do the merging that is the process of comparing and combining two blocks into one block moving back up the call stack we'll have to do this on each step until we have one unified sorted block if that seems totally overwhelming to code out well i would say this is one of those that's near impossible to do without seeing it first that is unless you already have a deep understanding of programming with that disclaimer out of the way here's the pseudocode let's dive into it <laughs> 